my name is Beck and welcome to a reading vlog. This is just a normal weekly reading vlog. I have a couple of goals. I would like to finish The Witcher book three, book two, because I'm currently reading this and I'm almost at the end. I have less than 100 pages left, so I was hoping to finish this by the end of January, but it just didn't work out that way. As I mentioned in my January wrap up, that's what I was hoping for at least, but I'll finish it this week. It's pretty quick and it's a pretty short fantasy book. I also have a couple of things on my February TBR and I wanted to read a whole bunch of romances in the first two weeks of February. So to kick that off, I want to read Get Alive Chloe Brown because I've heard this is just great. It's got a lot of hype behind it and I really want to be on board that hype train as well. And then if I get through that, I have one more book. Well, I mean, technically I've got two because I've got the sequel to Get Alive Chloe Brown if I end up really liking it. And then I've also got The Humans by Matt Haig. I've seen people rave about this and absolutely adore it. And then I've seen other people just go, yeah, it was a three stars. The concepts were pretty clear from the beginning of the book and so was the trajectory of the story. So hopefully I fall on the side that really love this rather than the people who just enjoy it and give it a three. We'll see, I'll report back. I do wanna read this this week as well. I'm not sure how my reading's gonna go because I have a lot of large goals, I guess, but they're not all long, long fantasy books. So I think I have got some light at the end of the tunnel when it comes to finishing them. And then also I forgot, I'm currently reading an audiobook, and that is Evershaw by Brandon Sanderson. This is the book that's a novella that's set after Cytonic. And I recently read Cytonic. I've got a spoiler vlog for it and I've got other Skywood content in the description that I'll link but this one is a novella that will spoil everything before it. So I'm not gonna say anything about it, but I am reading it and I'm liking it. So that's all you really need to know. Hello, so last night I ended up finishing The Witcher. I stayed up past my bedtime and then was very tired at work and kind of, well, I wanna say all for nothing, but also at the same time, I'll probably continue because trigger warning for rape and sexual assault. That's all I'm gonna say. I was hoping that it wouldn't go down that road because so far The Witcher has been pretty good with the series and its characters. But I think I was just living, I don't know, maybe I'm being naive, who knows. Of the time it was written, maybe it's just to be expected. I'm finding this very hard to talk about without spoiling anything. So if you wanna know specifics, I've written them in my Goodreads review for this and I've tagged it with spoilers. So I'll link that below if you want to see the actual reasonings behind this. One of them was the content warning I just mentioned. And so I gave this two stars and I thought I'd give it a three, a three and a half, or maybe even a four if the ending actually worked out a lot better. I wish this was better, but at the same time, I don't think it's a series deal breaker for me because there are pieces of world building and magic and a particular character or two that I want to continue the series for. So for the moment, I'll continue the series with the next book. And then if that also drags or goes in the direction that this does, then I'm probably gonna not read anymore. But anyway, I've talked more about The Witcher than I plan to in this vlog. So without further ado, I am reading Chloe Brown and I am loving this. I need to keep reminding myself that it's quite ridiculous, but in a good way, because it's kind of like reading a rom-com, right? And I'm used to reading about swords and magic, so I need to just calm my farm. But I think because it's actually talking about real people in real life, I'm expecting it to be more realistic. And it's not, like it's obviously a rom-com in a book. But I love the way that the characters are treated in here. The main character, Chloe Brown, she's got fibromyalgia. And so it talks about her disability, like physically, and it talks about her past relationships and how she wasn't really friends with that many great people. And so, as a result, the relationships that she builds in the future, she's cut them off before they can really go anywhere. And I like that depth and emotion to her character and I like her love interest as well. At the beginning of this book, it said that there are trigger warnings for healing from an abusive relationship. And I think this is handled with really nice gravity to the point where it's treated with a lot of respect for the love interest and for all the characters around him. And I think it's done really well, to be honest. And I love the interactions between these characters. I have read almost 240 pages in essentially one sitting. I only stopped reading because I had to eat dinner. So that's telling you that I'm really enjoying this and I'm definitely on board the hype train. They've already had their like deal breaking thing, their fight. And I think I'm suspecting that there will be another fight before the ending because I have a little bit left. There'll be some other kind of conflict that'll come up and I'm kind of cringing from secondhand embarrassment, but 
I know that it will be handled well because the relationship in here has been very well established. So I'm loving the banter, I'm loving the tension, I'm loving how sexy this is. It's just a lot of fun and it's very well timed for the beginning of February coming up into Valentine's Day. I don't know how I'm going to go reading the other two books because I don't know if I love the setups for Chloe's sisters because they're very caricature-y but at the same time they've been introduced in a very significant way to what their characters are expected to be like and then I imagine their book will go into depth the same way that this book went into depth with Chloe's character so I think there's potential there I shouldn't write them off yet because I haven't even read those books yet but I do plan on reading both of them at this stage so I'll finish this probably tonight to be honest and then I will pick up something else that's probably romance or contemporary and I am glad that this is making me really happy after reading The Witcher and just being disappointed. I ended up finishing Get A Life Chloe Brown and I posted about it on my personal Instagram and then a friend at work wanted to borrow it so I don't have the copy of the book anymore on hand but I gave it five stars and I adored it. And I said before that I was a bit worried about how the conflict might go because sometimes when they do a conflict in a romance I find it very cringeworthy but in this case it actually pulled from the fears and legitimate emotions of both characters and that's what caused the conflict as a misunderstanding rather than uh, something one of the characters deliberately did like lied to somebody and that's how it caused a blowout so I really like the way that it handled all of these themes and obviously that's why I gave it five stars and so naturally I've now read 50 pages of the sequel <laughs> so I'm really looking forward to getting through this one as well this one though is about Danny Brown so it's Chloe's sister and Danny is a university lecturer and she gets saved from a stuck elevator by Zahia and he is a security guard or security personnel for the building and then after he saved her everything gets posted online about random people shipping them and so they kind of go along with the idea that they are actually dating when they really aren't so this has the trope of fake dating in it and I like that because it builds a rapport between characters and I like that Zahia has a fascination with romance novels I think it's a bit cheesy but ultimately it's cute and so far I'm liking their interactions with each other and I like their chemistry already so I believe that this is going to be at least a four, if not a four and a half or a five as well. And then I went to the bookstore yesterday and I tried to get book three, but they didn't have any stock and they won't have it for like two weeks. So I won't be able to finish this trilogy, but at least I've got the next one potentially coming. So really that's my reading for now. I do want to read The Humans, which I've got here. And then I've also got Cemetery Boys if I finish The Humans. So it's a pretty high goal, but I think I can kind of get there, especially with the way that these books are written. They're not too long. They're basically not fantasy. And that's what I'm used to because it takes me so long. Not that I don't enjoy it, but I'm enjoying that I can get through books a little bit quicker. So I'm hoping to have all of these read by the time mid-February rolls around because I'm reading all of these in time for Valentine's Day and then also I want to start the second Mistborn book and I know that'll take me a while so I'm trying to get a lot of my TBR out of the way before I tackle Mistborn. It is now Tuesday night and I'm ending this vlog on Thursday or Friday I think so we're coming to the pointy end of my reading. I've got about an hour and a half left of Evershaw which I mentioned at the beginning of this vlog. I'm liking the emotions and the world building and like the magic system exploration in this Again, I'm also like, why is this a novella instead of part of the main series? I feel like if this was part of Cytonic, it would have made Cytonic like a four, maybe five stars for me rather than just the three, three and a half that Cytonic got. So I'm liking Evershaw. I just wish it was integrated into the story, which is the same feedback I've had for the past two Skyward novellas. But moving on from Skyward talk, I have very polar opposite thoughts of the next two books. I am currently reading Cemetery Boys and this is just the jacket because I have the physical book in a bag where I can't reach. Uh, I read 40 pages and I like this quite a lot. It follows a trans boy whose family have male and female magics and these magics are very linked into the Day of the Dead and to tradition and this main character is like well I'm a trans boy so my magic is going to be linked to the male side and he's denied the tradition of going through the ceremony to activate his magic and use it so he's fighting against a lot of different varying traditions he's fighting against getting dead named a lot and I like the way so far that he's got a close friend he's talked about family and about grief and there are a few other things that I feel are going to come into play but I don't want to spoil them yet but so far I really like the tone this is taking I quite like the world building so far it's pretty great for a YA it's kind of like an older YA I think 
and I'm liking it. So at least three stars, maybe four, I think I'm going to give this, but I'm still very early on into this physical book. And then the other one that I have a very opposite thought of, I read six pages of this and then I immediately put it down and it's The Humans by Matt Haig. And I thought this would be a five stars for me. Turns out it was just a flat out DNF. And I'm quite disappointed that I didn't like this, but the tone felt very telling to me. It felt very in my face and not in like an aggressive way, but just in a very direct, this is what is going on. Like, hi reader, this is me. This is what I'm doing. This is what humans are like. Humans exist, by the way. And it didn't feel very authentic. There was a line on page six that I was like, oh, that's the only line that has interested me so far. And then my interest disappeared again. And that line began the chapter and it said, yes, like I said, we should start with when I was hit by a car, which should have probably been the opening scene because the rest of the setup I didn't care about. It's very obvious that this character is an alien. They're inhabiting or about to inhabit a human. They're going to learn everything about humanity that makes things interesting and worthwhile and emotional for people in general. But just the way it's delivered is really not my vibe. And so immediate DNF, I'm not going to waste my time reading it. It's not a book that I no, I'll enjoy. So there's no point in continuing it. And I'm quite disappointed that I've kind of wasted my money. But if I didn't buy this book, I probably wouldn't have picked it up. So swings and roundabouts. You can't love everything that you buy. And I don't buy too much. So I think this is okay. But anyway, really quite enjoying Cemetery Boys. And I'm aiming to have that finished or close to finished by the end of this week. So when I update next, I'll probably be wrapping up this vlog and I'll see what I've read. As predicted, I am here to wrap up this reading vlog. In conclusion, I have read DNF'd and progressed on certain things. So first of all, I finished The Witcher, gave it two stars, wished it was better. We all know. Uh, I'm currently reading Evershaw. I have 16 minutes left of the audiobook and I just missed finishing it before this update occurred. But I do plan on finishing it today and then hopefully filming my thoughts about it afterwards. We'll see how we go with that. I also read the two Tali Hibbert books. So one was Get a Life Chloe Brown and then I followed that up with Take a Hint Danny Brown and I gave this a five stars as well. Both of them are five stars. I also went to the bookstore and I got the third book, but it's on back order and it's going to take at least two weeks. Then I also DNF'd The Humans by Matt Haig, just not my style. And then after that, what else is there? I'm still currently reading Cemetery Boys and I haven't gotten further than 40 pages, but that's not because I'm not enjoying it. It's just because I've been prioritizing watching TV with Dave. So we're currently watching All of Us Are Dead, which is a Korean zombie show set in a high school. And yeah, sometimes the episodes drag on a little bit, but we skip little bits of scenes so that it speeds it up. So I love the choreography in that show. I love the take on the apocalypse. Alarmingly, they have included COVID in one of the explanations of how the virus has like an incubation period. Super weird seeing it in a TV show. I've also started watching Jack Reacher with Dave as well. And the show on, I think Amazon was also based on the book called The Killing Floor. And I read that book years ago and I don't really remember anything apart from like big tall ex army guy is gone rogue, but also is helping solve murders. And really that's all I know about it. And the show is okay. Honestly, it's not really drawing me in, but if it's on, I'll watch it. It's like big man takes on crime is really the story. So it's enjoyable. We're watching it and that means I haven't read much more to be honest but next on audio after I finish Evershaw I really want to pick up Autobiography by Christina Lauren which is a queer young adult book but I don't know too much beyond that. I think there's a conversion camp in there for queer youth but beyond that I don't know so I'm interested in picking that up because a few friends of mine have enjoyed it. It's been on my radar a little bit and I've been meaning to try Christina Lauren's writing for a while. And then the last thing I ended up buying the next Witcher book because Eve Brown's book wasn't available and I had to spend my gift voucher on something. So I will put this in a TBR in the future, but given that I gave the last book two stars, jury is still out. I'm going to continue. I just don't know when. So it will happen. I have the next book. Hopefully it goes into more of like a quest format with the main characters, Geralt and Ciri, and then I'll be a bit more interested, but we'll see. So. I did a whole bunch of reading. I did some DNFing. I've DNFed like four books this year, which I'm pretty happy with. Not in like, oh, I've started them and I don't like them and I've put them down and it's a whole drama. I'm just happy that I've decided to keep my reading going by saying, you know what? I'm not enjoying this right now. I'm giving myself the free time to actually put it down and maybe revisit it later or maybe just not 
continue reading it all and I think that's quite a powerful thing given how big my TBR used to be. So that is it for this vlog. Let me know if you've DNF'd anything lately. Let me know if you've had any five stars lately. I've had two five stars and a DNF in this vlog so really you don't know <laughs> until you try. So thank you again so much for watching this video. I'll come chat to you down below in the comments and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.